A judge in Texas is hearing oral arguments today over whether the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, best known as DACA, well, whether it's legal. That's right. You'll remember this Obama-era policy allows qualified applicants who are brought to the U.S. as children to apply for renewable work permits and a temporary pardon from deportation. Well, there are currently more than 580,000 DACA recipients all over the country. Nearly 96,000 of them live in Texas. CBS News reporter Camilo Montoya Galvez joins us now. Camilo, walk us through this. Who is this judge? What's the purpose of the hearing today? Hi, Lana and Errol. This is the biggest legal threat faced by the DACA program, which the Obama administration created back in 2012 to grant deportation protections and work permits to unauthorized immigrants who were brought to the U.S. as children, as minors. And this is because a judge in Texas is now set to rule on whether he should completely shut down this Obama-era program. Back in 2021, this same judge agreed to a request by Texas and other Republican-led states to declare DACA unlawful, and he shut down the program for first-time applicants, but he allowed current recipients, about nearly 600,000 DREAMers, to continue renewing their applications. Now, the same GOP-led states want Hainan to declare DACA unlawful yet again, but also to shut it down completely, including to bar renewals over a two-year period. And hanging in the balance are all these young people and, and professionals who are trying to get an education. They're all over the country, as we've mentioned. But they serve one, in the military, they pay taxes. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. And a lot of your coverage has, has been very um, sharp in identifying what they're going through. One, of, one out of six of them, though, lives in Texas. So considering this is on the line, what happens to them? Well, if this program is shut down completely, the nearly 600,000 people enrolled in it would immediately lose their ability to renew their work permits. So at some point, they will be, be left unemployed and unable to work here legally. Wow. They may be forced into the underground economy. Some of them may choose to deport themselves back to their home countries, to return to their home countries because of their financial situation. Because the Biden administration right now is focused on deporting immigrants with serious criminal convictions or those who pose a threat to national security, these DREAMers won't likely face imminent deportation threats. But if they come in contact with the criminal justice system for whatever reason, they could be at risk of deportation. So that is a very real possibility. And they could be at risk of losing potentially scholarships, yeah. financial aid, uh, potentially their, uh, their ability to work. Yes. Because the program has been in place for over 10 years now, for over a decade, even though it was a stopgap measure by the Obama administration to give Congress time. And because of that, many of these DREAMers have now had children, they have been enrolled in schools, they have bought homes, and so they have really integrated into American yeah, some society. Some of them don't even speak another language and besides so English. And so this ruling could uproot their lives and the lives of their U.S. children. And some of children. them have spent more of their life in the U.S. building a life than in their home oh, yes. countries. I mean, I mean this is massive. These dreamers are in their 30s or even early 40s, and they came to the U.S. when they were five, two years old. So this would be a massive displacement if this ruling were to strike down DACA. All right, Camilo, you also mentioned the Biden administration and their actions are planning to expand the processing of asylum seekers along the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, we're learning something more about this, uh, this plan to admit nearly yes. 40,000 migrants per month. What can you tell us? Yes, so the Biden administration is preparing to admit and process as many as 40,000 asylum seekers along the U.S.-Mexico border on a monthly basis. This is through a process facilitated by an app known as CBP-1. This is a government-issued app that allows migrants in Mexico to request an appointment to enter the U.S. at a port of entry, where officials determine whether they should be allowed inside the country to seek asylum. Right now, the app is going to allow nearly 1,300 migrants to enter the U.S. on a daily basis. That is a sharp increase from the 700 average just weeks ago. So long as the app works, so long as Correct. there are no glitches, right. which we know have also correct. been an issue. Uh, Camilo Montoyo Galvez with more crucial reporting. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks.